The government's announced that isolation periods for COVID-19 will reduce from 10 to 7 days from tomorrow night. But the ACT Party says it's come too late and the isolation period is still too long. Leader David Seymour joins me now. Good morning to you. Seven days, still too long? Yeah, look, I, I think making it a week is a weak response from the government. These isolation rules have been unworkable from the start. Remember, originally it was 14 days plus another 10 for your household. So, you know, 24 uh, in total for everyone that lives with you. Uh, then we went to 10 days and now seven. But what's been common is it, it seems they need to destroy the economy before we can get sensible rules uh, that might work. All that time, uh, we haven't stopped spread. We've had exponential growth in the number of cases, which now appears to be peaking, uh, just like it has in other countries at about 4,000 uh, cases per person per day. Uh, these isolation rules haven't worked, I suspect, because people who can't afford to comply with them just don't. And you heard that story about people throwing tests out. That's if they do a test. Uh, scanning and contact tracing fell off a cliff very early because people couldn't afford to isolate when that was one of the criteria. So what we've had is huge economic devastation with an unworkable isolation regime uh, and yet spread has, has carried on growing exponentially anyway. Uh, what they should have done and what ACT recommended is what they do in Singapore. They say 72 days, two negative tests and you're out. Because at the moment, we say it's seven days, even if you might not have it or you might have recovered, uh, you have to keep staying home. And, and that's just really wasteful at a time when there's so much economic pressure on people already and so many supply chains uh, aren't able to operate. I mean, you look at supermarkets having to shut and having empty shelves. Well, just remember, exactly the same thing has been happening in hospitals, uh, except now they've made exceptions just for them, uh, while the rest of the economy suffers under the same rules. So if seven's too long, uh, you're saying more of a 72-hour period, surely that's going to put the community at more risk. You say it's widespread, that it's, it's prevalent, which it is, but surely that's going to compound things, make it worse? Well, it's a question of finding balance so that people that have COVID are isolating and people that don't have COVID are not. So the way the Singaporeans do it, 72 hours or three days and then two negative tests, uh, the Americans say five days and a negative test. If we'd had a regime like that, so people who haven't tested negative are still isolating, uh, but people that do test negative are, are able to get out, uh, get back on the field and keep fulfilling their own needs as well as keeping the economy going, uh, we would have had a lot less loss in economic activity. Uh, but I suspect we would have had the same result in terms of the growth in cases, which has been exponential anyway. I just go and walk around the streets and speak to business owners I go into shops and they're, they're devastated. I'm almost always the only person in there. And unfortunately for them, I'm, I'm not a customer. I'm just a politician asking how they are. All right, so we're moving in the right direction. Uh, it's moving on Friday. Let's talk about uh, the PM's comments over the cost of living. Uh, this is a hot topic on everyone's lips. Uh, what do you make of her comments? Well, frankly, she's out of touch. Uh, there is a crisis. People see that their costs have gone up anywhere from four, five, seven thousand dollars, hundred, hundred and fifty dollars a week extra, uh, just for groceries and fuel. That's before you talk about rent. Uh, that is a crisis for people affected that way because they can't make ends meet. Uh, I'm getting messages from people who are saying we're all at home, we can't afford to go out. Uh, we're students, we can't afford to drive. People are saying the cost of actually going out to earn money uh, is unaffordable when they consider the petrol price that they're facing. Now, I know that some of this is caused by international factors, and I know that it's happening to some extent in all countries, uh, but it's happening in all countries because they've done similar things, locked down and borrowed money. It's happening worse here uh, because we locked down harder and borrowed more money. And I think the Prime Minister needs to start accepting that that is reality for people now. And she also needs to accept it's the government with its insatiable need to tax, borrow and spend that is causing a large part of the problem well, for she us. Wants you know, to spend. Every... She wants to spend on lifting the minimum wage. She wants to... Uh, family tax credits are coming in. Um, that's spending money, isn't it? Well, lifting the minimum wage is, is making employers spend more money at precisely the worst time. But I'd also add that, you know, last I checked, only 6.8% of people are on the minimum wage. 
Uh, and a large proportion of those are young people, not heads of households that are really under pressure with dependents right now. So I think we can really part the minimum wage as a solution to the cost of living uh, crisis. I mean, what I think we should do is actually say, look, the, the government's just spent uh, or taxed an extra $14 billion just in the last year. That's not what they're taxing, that's the rise in the last year, $14 billion over the last four years in total. Uh, of every single person in this in this country, the amount of tax taken adjusted for inflation has gone up two thousand one hundred and thirty eight dollars. Uh, Act would say, look, we'd, we'd reduce taxes by about two thousand dollars a worker, and that would go a long way uh, to allowing people to cover some of those rising costs that they're facing. All right, so it seems like National wanting the tax cuts. You're in a similar line. Uh, Act Party leader David Seymour, thank you for your time this morning. Thank Kia ora. You.